At a meeting of the Fabian Society, Miss Clementina Black gave a capital lecture on female labour and urged the formation of a consumer's league, pledged only to buy from shops certified clean from unfair wages. H.H. Champion, in the discussion that followed, drew attention to the wages paid by Bryant and May while paying an enormous dividend to their shareholders. Herbert Burroughs and I interviewed some of the girls, got lists of wages, of fines. A typical case is that of a girl of 16, a piece worker. She earns four shillings a week and lives with a sister employed by the same firm who earns as much as eight or nine shillings a week. Out of the earnings, two shillings a week is paid for the rent of one room. The child lives only on bread and butter and tea, alike for breakfast and dinner, but related with dancing eyes that once a month she went to a meal where you get coffee and bread and butter and jam and marmalade and lots of it. We published the facts under the title of White Slavery in London and called for a boycott of Bryant and May's matches. I was promptly threatened with action for libel, but nothing came of it. It was easier to strike at the girls. And a few days later, Fleet Street was enlivened by the eruption of a crowd of match girls demanding Annie Besant. I couldn't speechify to match girls in Fleet Street and so asked that a deputation should come and explain what they wanted. Up came three women and told their story. They had been asked to sign a paper certifying that they were well treated and contented and that my statements were untrue. They refused. You've spoken up for us, explained one and we weren't going back on you. A girl pitched on as their leader was threatened with dismissal. She stood firm. Next day, she was discharged for some trifle and they all threw down their work, some 1,400 of them. If we ever worked in our lives, Herbert Burroughs and I worked for the next fortnight. A pretty hubbub we created. We asked for money and it came pouring in. We registered the girls to receive strike pay wrote articles, roused the clubs, held public meetings, got Mr. Bradlaugh to ask questions in Parliament, stirred up constituencies in which shareholders were members, till the whole country rang with the struggle. We led a procession of the girls to the House of Commons and interviewed, with a deputation of them, members of Parliament who cross-questioned them. The girls behaved splendidly, stuck together, kept brave and bright all through. The London Trades Council finally consented to act as arbitrators and a satisfactory settlement was arrived at. The girls went into work and fines and deductions were abolished. Better wages paid. The Matchmakers Union was established. Still the strongest women's trade union in England. 